Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Security clearance delays El Rufai Okotete Danladi. FBN shares seek SEC intervention in takeover bid. ECOWAS plans review of Niger Junta position. WAIEC withdraws candidates' results from eight states. I sold jobs for 1.5 millionaire at federal agency, says ex worker. No plot to impeach Shebu, says Obaseki. And um, federal government uncovers 44 multiple taxes in bills. Okay, which story are we starting with? Okay, I have um, West Africa Examination Council. That's why it has withheld the West African Senior School Certificate Examination results of candidates from eight states. Um, the YX head of the Nigerian National Office, Mr. Patrick Area, described Zamfara and Niger states as chronic debtors. He also said that Zamfara did not present candidates for this year's examination. He didn't give details on all the other on the other states. That the six states, but he said that those ones were going to pay. He says about eight states were owing Wayek, but he won't mention the others because they are going to pay. However, Zamfara and Niger are the biggest debtors. Zamfara did not present any candidates. He also gave us a breakdown on the number of students that registered this year. He said 1,621,884 candidates registered um, from over 20,000 recognized secondary school, but um, just 1,613,733 candidates sat for the examination. It said about 84.33% of them obtained credit and above in a minimum of five um, subjects. Other results also were withheld for exam or practices, and he said that um, they will continue to sanction cases of exam or practice, advising parents to stop funding the so-called expo. That's the illegal, where you illegally get those um, question papers outside the exam hall. For your children. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the drama going on in the uh, Federal Character Commission. So the former staff member of the FCC, Harun Okolo, yesterday admitted before the House of Representative Committee, the ad hoc committee of the House of Representative, um, investigating job racketeering. Um, and he admitted that he served uh, as a front for collecting money from job seekers on behalf of the commission's chairman. Haruna said that he collected between 1 million and 1.5 million from 25 job seekers who sought employment in the commission. But the chairman, uh, Muiba Dankaka, swore by the Holy Quran that she never collected any money from Kolo. The agency chairman had said she had never asked the ex staff member to collect money from any job seekers. So she said that, um, according to her, she, was, she swore by the Quran, said that if I have ever collected, ever collected money or asked anybody, to collect money on my behalf. May God destroy all that she has worked for. Mm. But Kolo, who told the hardcore committee, said that he earns 110,000 Naira per month. However, he couldn't defend why 38 million Naira was found in his personal account. And he kept saying that he collected the money and he handed it over, he'll take it to her house to deliver to her. But she is saying that that has never happened. So I guess the investigation is ongoing and we'll see where that takes us. Wow. All right. Wow. I'd like to take the story that says no plot to impeach Shebo says Obaseke. So um, the, there's still a power tussle going on between the governor of Edo State and his deputy. And this is stemming from um, the secession uh, crisis that has hit the People's Democratic uh, Party in Edo State. So the governor claims that he doesn't know that his deputy has an intention to run for the governorship uh, seat in 2024. Meanwhile, the deputy is saying that he's been witch hunted because he does not, he's been witch hunted and he doesn't have the support of the governor for whatever reason. And uh, the governor also, while addressing um, journalists, he said that the move by the deputy governor to go to the uh, federal high courts to get an injunction against impeaching him was just a preemptive uh, move because nobody planned to impeach him based on his intentions to become a governor. Rather, they were discussing why he would want to move to APC instead of you know, staying with the PDP. So the Afemai people, that's where they are bought from, are insisting that uh, the, they have to continue with the zoning of uh, the governorship uh, seats, that it doesn't have to be from 
the governors do not have to come yeah. from Edo uh, West. They have to switch it to Edo North as well. So that part also is going on. And then we just have to keep our fingers crossed to see how right. that unfolds. Yeah. So um, <laughs> our Senate have taken a break from <clears throat> going through nominees. They've cleared 45 of the um, nominees that were sent out of the 48 sent. Three were outstanding. So we have the former governor, El Rufai. We have Danladi and Okotete. I was really looking forward to listening to Okotete's um, um, session when she gets to be questioned by the assembly, um, but that couldn't happen. And this is because they were still awaiting security screening on both the former governor as well as Okotete. While that, um, their security clearance, rather not security screening, their security clearance was still pending. And there is a pending case that needs to be confirmed, which is that Nanladi is not allowed to take any political position over a period of time. Then there are some petitions that were um, made against El Rufai as well as Okotete. And so based on all of that, they have post um, screening of nominees for ministerial position up until 26th of September when they resume from their the break. They've taken over, I think it's about six weeks break that they've taken. They were supposed to take the break earlier, um, but they didn't take the break so they can do the screening. So 45 have been approved to be ministers within the country and they were waiting to hear what will happen from September 26th when they resume mm. at the Senate. All right, moving on quickly now to the punch. FG withdraws contempt suit against Labour NLC may suspend strike. Jack Conde received, no, conceived Banana Island allocated no plot to himself, says son. Mm. Mob attacks cop as boss crushes motorists on BRT lane. FBN shareholders protest AGM suspension, demand regulators intervention. Um, Nigeria, Niger, mega rail, mega rail project threatened. Over 1,000 trucks trapped. Senate refuses to confirm El Rufai, Dan Ladif, and the female nominee. And Obaseki dismisses impeachment plot, says Sheibu planning APC defection. Okay, let me talk about the, um, the maiden edition of Alaji. Um, late Alaji Latif Jakonde um, yesterday happened and the, the, quite a number of governors were present. The Lagos State Governor was represented by his deputy, um, Dr. Um, Obafemi Hamzat. His son, Sheyi, was speaking at the event uh, that took place at um, Sheraton Hotel Ikeja and he was saying that um, they were reviewing the lecture by La Latif Jakonde, the man, his journalism, his politics, and was organized by the Guild, Nigerian Guild of Editors. Interestingly, he was actually the very first um, chairman of the NDE, wow. NGE, the Nigerian, because he was a journalist. He was the first president Thank of you. the NGE who served and also served later as governor. But um, Sheyi was say, saying that his father, who actually started, um, conceptualized the idea of Banana Island, started even with the feeling of, of Banana Island, never wow. allocated any land to himself or his family. People used to wonder, does he even have a wife or children? You know, he never allocated anything to himself. That, 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 and was, was known for being a very... Let what the paper said now. Ah, sorry. <laughs> so the papers, well, she also, he also mentioned that he wanted the Lagos State government to consider renaming Lasso after his father, Jack Conde, because according to him, um, the, he was the one that actually... Um, um, he was, he was, he was his, the institution was his brainchild, and he, I think they believe that he deserved to be named, um, to be given that name after him. Yes. I agree. Okay. Um, but I also feel like um, Jaconde is known for his integrity and his visionary stance with development within Lagos. You know, we credit um, our president for 1999 till now, but we should also credit Jaconde for the progress Lagos had from um, his time till mm -hmm. now as well. We wanted to do Blue Reel back right. then. Let's go on a quick break. When we return, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Any other story? Yes, right. I have um, this story that says a mob on Monday descended on a police officer hmm. um, after he had um, allegedly pushed a man called Yusuf onto a, like a BRT lane and... Uh, uh, had pushed him and then a BRT bus came and crushed this person. Mm -hmm. So um, eyewitnesses are alleging that um, this Yusuf was, was um, police people, uh, policemen were trying to extort Yusuf and in the course of doing that they pushed him out and the bus came and crushed him. Ouch. He fell. Although eyewitnesses also say that he didn't die but he had a cut on his arm and he was bleeding. He laid down almost lifeless on the ground. And so 
according to eyewitnesses, they said that the police was trying to escape and they also surrounded him, beat him up as well. And um, uh, eventually other police officers came and rescued their person and people also were trying to help the other one. But the police command is saying that that's not what happened, that the policeman and Mr. Yusuf are both victims of an accident. They said this BRT bus was the one that was illeg driving illegally on the lane and he hit both of them. But eyewitnesses account is saying something different. So that's what we have on that matter. Okay. okay. But they've both been rushed to the hospital. Right. Taken okay. to the hospital. I have the Niger story, Nigeria Niger mega rail project threatened. And this is stemming from the declining diplomatic ties between Nigeria and Niger. So we have over 1,000 trucks stuck at the Niger-Nigeria border, you know, <clears throat> and those trucks are carrying over 350 million naira worth of goods. And, uh, you know, the story went further to talk about the rail project that was, uh, it, it was embarked upon by the Buhari Mario administration. Did, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, it's a $2 billion uh, rail project. And it's supposed to connect Kano and Niger. And uh, you know, when the president spoke about that uh, project, or w when they launched that project, it came with a lot of backlash because yeah. people did not understand why we would want to build a rail to connect Niger in the first instance. But then the president made a um, statement saying that they just found oil, and it's better for them to you know to transport it through Nigeria instead of um, Benin. And then the project actually commenced, unfortunately, because of these um, issues that are happening between Nigeria and uh, Niger. The projects have now been halted, and um, the contractor is saying that they have started work and they have employed over 300 um, uh, employees. Uh, they've employed over 300 Nigerians, cool. exactly. And, right. you know, they are really suffering the backlash of the Cold War between both right. countries. Okay. So the um, labor will not be going on strike. So, you know, Nigerian labor, they said they were going to go on strike on the 14th of August based on the fact that the federal government was taking them to court to sue them for contempt of the court order. And when they threatened the strike, the government has withdrawn the, the contempt case in court and now they have backed out from, um, they are saying they will back, back out from going on strike. So the reason for the contempt case was because they had already gone to the National um, Industrial Court that Labour shouldn't have gone on that protest on Wednesday. But Labour said, based on their lawyer, um, the advice. advice that they went ahead with it, and that was why they were going to be sued for, um, on content. And right now, I'm happy that we're actually talking to one another and we're not going to bring the entire economy <sighs> right into halt. a halt just because we want to prove a point. We're hoping that we put the interest of Nigerians above personal agenda. Thank you. Daily Sun, Niger, Yekwa's latest perfect action plan. Akpabio promises to take up the Southeast case for appointment of more ministers. FG to remove taxes on tomatoes, raw food items soon, says JTB chairman. Abiola persuaded my father to join Abacha's government, says Jack on this son. Mob beats policeman over death, death of man crushed by BRT. Waik withholds Wasi results of eight states over debt. Seplat Energy's gas revenue grows to $63.7 million. Tinubu, Atiku, hail Falcon's performance against England. Okay, <clears throat> which story are we? I will take federal government to remove taxes on tomatoes, raw foods items soon. So we have uh, Mr. Mohamed Nami, that's the chairman for the Joint Tax Board. He's also the executive chairman of FIRS and um, at the harmonization and codification of taxes at national and subnational levels. Keys to achieving tax friendly environment in Nigeria, Abuja meeting. That's the 153rd JTB meeting. He said that um, um, ending taxation on non taxable um, items was part of the proposed tax reforms by this administration. Um, he said that we do not want goods and services that are not taxable to be taxed for the informal sector. Um, he also said that we'll have an enumeration in the sector to ensure that those that are trading goods like tomatoes, raw food items are not made to pay taxes. Those that are not making up to 25 million naira will not be allowed to pay company tax or value-added tax. 
Um, he's also said that we're quite lucky that this new administration from the very first day has indicated interest in eliminating multiple taxations. And the implication is that what we call informal taxes, black taxes, or whatever name it is called, either at the federal, state, or local government levels, will be eliminated. Um, he says the harmonization process will also reduce the number of taxes, block leakages, as well as boost revenue generation. So, I mean, this is good news, especially for the informal sector. You know, that's what we cry about all the time. You're taxed for different things at different, you know, different points. And then you're not, and I also like the fact that if you're not making up to 25 million, you'll not be expected to pay company tax or value added tax. Yeah. That's good. All right. So the Senate president yesterday, after the, um, the session they had, um, was able to assure 14 members of the, uh, of the senators from the southeast zone that he will speak to the president concerning the, um, the, the balance, the need to balance the geopolitical representation in the ministerial appointments. They raised that motion, um, according to the paper, the Senate president, who spoke at the end of the plenary or was reacting to a motion step down in the order paper, the motion tagged urgent needs to balance geopolitical representation in the, in the ministerial appointment and it was sponsored by um, Tony Nwoye and 14 other senators from the Southeast Geopolitical Zone. And he assured them that he would discuss it with the president. And I don't know what, that, what that's going to mean because we currently have 48. Are they going to add more or are going to remove some more? I mean, that's, that's an interesting um, conversation to have. Okay, mm. let's move on quickly now. We, um, on. Um, Wiki, Wiki had already written letter you know that we know that we, um, as a former governor, former governor right? of, of river state is a pdp member and now is is accepted to serve as a minister as a minister in an apc government so he's written he had written the letter even before going for his nomination that he was going to let pdp know that he has accepted to serve in this government because he believes in collaboration and working together for the growth of nigeria and he believes that he would continue to remain a card carrying PDP member <laughs> while he intends to serve as an APC. APC in the APC government. Well, he's, seven... he's not stepping down. That's the, he wanted that clarification yeah. out and he informed the PDP of his intention yeah. to serve. And at that level, we are really that. serving Nigeria. Yeah. So, yeah. Vanguard, Minister, Senate stops El Rufai, Okutete, and Danladi. No plot to impeach Deputy Governor, says Obaseki. Biafra, sits at home, is dead, buried, says Namdekano. Gunmen kidnap monarch, wife in Nasarawa. Protest marking day NLC, TUC, and feud. Billion Naira debt, WAEC withholds results of candidates. FG to harmonize multiple taxation, says NAMI. And uh, FG withdraws contempt, contempt charge against NLC and TUC. Okay, which story are we starting with the Vanguard? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Anybody has? Okay, let me start with the Namdekano. So the leader of IPOB, Maz Namdi Kano, yesterday said on Monday sits at home that all the Monday sits at home in the southeast is dead and buried. Kano urged the people of the southeast to welcome the cancellation of the sit at home order. He was speaking through his council, um, Ifai in age of four. He charged residents of the southeast to reject those using his name to dupe people. Although it was IPOP that initiated the sit-at-home order to push for Kano's release, the initiative was hijacked, according to him, uh, by criminal elements using the measure to cause havoc. In a bid to find a lasting solution to the first sit-at-home, Kano cancelled the initiative and replaced it with the Economic Empowerment Day, that's EED. So now we'll see who's really in charge. Is it the guy in Finland? Is it Ekwa Samanekwa? Mm -hmm. Or Kano, who is um, behind bars? Who, on only time will tell. Another story in um, Vanguard? Yes, there's been a crisis in um, Oyo State. The NLC, the, um, there's been a standoff between Governor Mark Ideo for your State, the NLC and TUC have decided to step in to end the feud. The governor has addressed the workers, finally, because that was what they were insisting they wanted. The governor addressed the workers at the Secretariat and assured them it would place priority on their welfare. He also ensured that he, he said he ac acknowledges the misunderstanding in the payment structure that occurred between both of them and he's willing to make, make do on their demands. So they are going to be, the demands remain worker salary deductions that were made from 2021 <coughs> and 2022 and promotion letter and release of their leave bonuses. So he 
explained that he has engaged NU, um, N, um, TUC and NLC. And if there is anything that he has done, you know, in this state, he was, of course, he apologized. And then he's also reiterating his commitment to the, the workers in the states. And at least for now, they are no longer blocking off the state's government, um, state's house and blocking, and, and they are no longer disarming people from being able to work. We're hoping that activities would return back to um, your states in full gear. Okay, any other story? Okay, moving on to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story of not taking. Why Senate withheld El Rufai? Two others' confirmation. Electricity, over 7 million customers still on estimated bill in sales report. NAVDAC scales of effort to eliminate fat linked to heart disease and diabetes in food supply. No plot to impeach Deputy Governors of Baseki. Emule Jakonde selfless service on Wulu or Shoba others task political office holders. An FG moves to end multiple taxation. Nominations open for 2023 Obafemi Aulo leadership prize. Any story there? Nope. Nobody has NAFDAQ. I was going to take NAFDAQ. Okay, I guess we've done. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all we can take on front page review today.